Hey, this is Doug Wimbish live and in living color, and you're watching four bass players only right here, right now. Peace and love. Hi everyone, I'm John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com and today we are here with Doug Wimbish. How you doing, Doug? Hey, John. Good morning to you. I'm doing just fine. Mellow as a cello, as they'd say. <laughs> yeah, you're so you. <laughs> it's great to see you. Uh, we did an interview uh, a while back on For Bass Players Only. We right. got the story about the Wimbash and all the other cool stuff you were doing at the time. But, uh, you know, that was a few years ago and uh, you never sit still. You've always got something going on. And uh, but bring us up to date. What's been happening? Uh, let, let me start out by congratulating you. I know that uh, School of Rock had a special presentation, uh, dedication of uh, what was it? A, a special room for you and Will Calhoun that we uh, we wrote about it on for bass players only. Yes, in um, Long Island, Rockville, Long Island, they were we were me and Will were blessed to have uh, some people honor us with a with our own room at the School of Rock. And there's, so there's a Will Calhoun room and a Doug Wimbish room. And some of my sponsors, like um, Pigtronics and Eventide and uh, Spectre, donated equipment there that's permanently going to be in the room for the kids. There's artifacts of, um, you know, different uh, periods of my life that are displayed on the wall, photos, uh, you know, all these little trinkets and stuff like that. And um, I'm, we're very proud and we're very honored to be able to... Um, be blessed to be here now and to be able to have that happen for us so on behalf of myself and will calhoun slash living color thank you school of rock well that's quite a distinction very well deserved too congratulations thank you thank you um i understand that you're you're doing a, a lot of other stuff aren't you producing some uh, some young people now that are showing a lot of promise tell me about that uh, i'm working with a band called unlocking the truth they are middle school kids that play heavy metal music i met them at afropunk which is a festival that takes place in brooklyn i invited the kids to come play my Wimbash up in connecticut and that year we had living color and a bunch of other bands playing they came up the first time i saw them play and they just destroyed the stage i couldn't believe what i was seeing they've opened up for metallica guns and roses um queens of the stone age um motorhead Wow. And, uh, and the name of the band again is? The name of the band is Unlocking the Truth. Malcolm Brickhouse, Jared Dawkins, and, and Alex, the bass player. I've also um, been mentoring other kids. I'm working with this new guitarist that's out. He's not really new. He's been out. He's an old soul. His name is Brandon Niederhauer. And um, this little kid is the truth. He's, um, once again, he's, he's 11 years old. He's been, um, op he's been on stage with the likes of Gary Clark Jr., the Allman Brothers, Government Mule, Warren Haynes, and I was just blown away with this kid. Then I started researching him a little bit. I noticed that he was on the Ellen DeGeneres show at nine years old, and she brought him on, and she's, he's playing songs for her, and she's blown away. <clears throat> and every time he's on stage, I just, I, I like his... His, his, uh, the shape of the notes that he's producing is very distinct. If, even if he's on stage with three other guitar players, his shape of that note is, is, is truly a, a, an act of God. You know, there's a lot of light for everybody. And, I've, and for me, where I am, I'm blessed to have done and worked with many, many artists. And now I'm, I guess my goal is to be able to, what can I do to help this next generation um, avoid some of the musical police officers that I had to deal with, avoid some of the, um, the, uh, the um, things that the industry dangle in your face, <laughs> and also understand how to navigate the business. So I introduced them to, to um, accountants and lawyers and understand, let, let them understand what a contract is about, how to save your money. Yeah. You know? So to me, it's important to be able to have um, everybody to be, first of all, enjoy what you're doing, Second of all, be respectful. And third of all, um, don't ask, don't look for anything, don't look for any pat in the back. Try not to go to sleep with your stage clothes on and just have fun. Yeah. I, I hope you all are listening because this is great stuff here, great advice. Doug, tell me briefly about your equipment. You mentioned Pigtronics, even tied. Uh, Spectre, did you say? Spectre, yeah. yeah. So, so tell me about your equipment. What are you using? Well, you know, I'm, I, I use devices that that have a waveform that attracts my ear. So at that particular 
And that leads me to these different companies and people that I meet at the company. So, for example, Spectre Bass, for example. I grew up playing Fenders. I met Stuart Spector when I was um, working with Mick Jagger years ago. And I, 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 was, I was working with Jeff Beck and Mick Jagger, and I just happened to be, you know, around the, all the stuff that was going on in Jeff's world. I managed to be on the back burner just watching. And what Jeff didn't embrace, he was like, Dougie, check this out. So, you know, once again, listening to my elders, I was able to meet Stuart Spector. And, uh, and then understanding, the, you know, the instrument, how he makes it, how uh, at that particular time it was... It was on some cutting edge kind of vibe. It had a traditional compo components to it, but it also had a new new flavors that I liked. Um, and I became very good friends with Stuart. You know, when he was in the in the good era. good guy. He's a good guy. It's a good guy. It's a good guy. Love you, Stuart. You're my man. We're going fly fishing. It's all it's all right. I know you're ready to go right now, but we are going fly fishing. It's a good company too. Yeah. It's a good company. Small company there in Saugerties, New York, and. Um, and, you know, in this world of industry, business, and capitalism, you know, you have these massive companies that, 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 that have a lot of power to be able to, you know, to be able to produce their product. Then you have other companies that, are, that catch the tailwind of these massive companies, and sometimes those companies try to suppress the little guys. So I've always been the guy, for, you know, to support the little guy. And as long as guys are cool, you know what I mean, it makes it easier for me to take a good journey with these guys. What, no matter where they go, I like, to be, I like to go with them. So to start off, I've been using the same gear my entire career. I'm very honorable with the people I work with. So Stuart Pe Spector, I use his basses. And Stuart's cool because we're mates. So if I'm, I grew up playing a Fender. So if he sees me playing my Fenders, which I'll never stop playing, he's not getting the hump. You know what I mean? And, and it's important to be able to be an artist and not be controlled by the um, status of a company. To, you know, making sure you're seen with these products all the time, which is kind of how it's been. You know, sign with the company, they put your face in the um, in newspapers, but you have to be seen using this product. Newspaper? Blah, 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 What's a newspaper? Blah, blah. I don't even know what that is. Or <laughs> I, you, see it, you see it online now, right? But all being said and done, it's like it, it, it limits sometimes the creativity when a company's telling you, we're sponsoring you, only use this instrument. It's like, it, it doesn't even make sense to me. But I understand why they do it because everybody wants to promote. As an artist, you know, I can't go to a recording studio with the Stones and break out certain basses. When I go to record with them, they already got a Fender Precision bass in the studio to work. I'm using their bass or whatever it is. Everybody has a desire. So how do you stay how do you walk between the raindrops of all these companies and still stay independent that comes from understanding and knowing the people that created the product so i befriend folks that are that i that i like and i try to go the journey as they've taken the journey i go through the i go on a journey with them through product and that's how i make my decisions on what i'm working with we'll do a follow-up interview there's always so much to talk about but uh, it's great what you're doing not just with the equipment that was very informative actually very educational but the, the stuff about the Wimbash and about these kids and how you're helping other people, it, it's all great. Keep, go, keep doing what you're doing, and we will all continue appreciating it. Doug Wimbash, thank you so much. Thank great you, catching John. up. Thank you, mate. Appreciate I'm, it. I'm John Liebman. You're watching 4BassPlayersOnly.com.